Hey everyone, I wanted to make a video showing how to create the textures that are completely customized from our base textures. Um, so the first thing, once you get the package, uh, I do always suggest, especially with this package, that you create uh, a new project in order to do the texture creation. And when you're done creating your textures, export that into your main project. The uh, reason being is inside the dungeon package here, you'll have uh, these uh, procedural materials. There's a lot. Um, none of these are built for runtime. They're all meant to be used in the editor to create textures, and then uh, you'll use those explorer textures in the standard shader. Um, because they're not made for runtime, they're quite large, and they take a while to compute. Uh, there are times that Unity will like to recompute a lot of them all at once, and if you do that in your main project, it may uh, end up slowing things down while you're working on your other stuff. Uh, that have nothing to do with these. So it's best just to open this in a new project, compute uh, all your textures, export those, and put the uh, uh, the export materials and textures into your actual project only. So um, let's start with, uh, this is our, the demo scene that I've been building. So let's start with this main floor here. Um, you can see it with the light on, with the light off. So. Um, what we're going to do is most of these are flat planes. These are just uh, uh, a flat plane here. And we have in our, um, under the base materials, this is outside of the dungeon because it can be used in other projects as well. Ignore all these for now. Uh, these are all ones I've already explored. Um, but we have all these base materials here. Uh, each one is a different look, and each one or many of them have uh, uh, options as well for you to use. So I want to do one with um, maybe uh, a marble floor. Um, so let's look at these marbles real quick. It takes a little minute to, for Unity to compute, and this is why you want to make sure you only do a couple at a time. Um, let's actually use this stone floor here. It's a very, uh, uh, let me expand this over. It's a very flat. Uh, stone very clean. It's already been modified. I'm just going to drag this over here for now just so I can see what it looks like. Um, this is obviously not how I'm going to use it. Uh, again, this material is not necessarily meant for runtime, uh, but I just wanted to be able to see it in um, in the scene and with the light on and off. Okay, so it's already been modified because I know I used this in, in the demo scene already. So I'm going to adjust these, put these back to 0.5 and zero, center those out again, uh, and put this at 0.5 as well. Uh, so this is the default look for this texture. Uh, there's no other options. Oftentimes underneath main there will be another set of options if, if this can be customized even more. There aren't. Um, so I am gonna, gonna change this a, a little bit. I'm going to adjust um, maybe the hue and saturation. Uh, maybe it doesn't really matter. You know, we just bring it down. Kind of did like that dark look. Um, Maybe a high contrast with a little brighter look, so it's a, like a light gray. Um, uh, let's see. There we go. That might be a, a decent look. Let's see with the light. Yeah, I like that look. So now that I, I, I have a base texture that I like, I'm going to. You can do this manually by using export bitmaps, uh, but you want to make sure that generate all outputs is checked or you can use our tool here we have two one save texture one is save texture for unity 5.2.3 and above if you're using 5.2 uh, but not yet 5.2.3 then uh, this whole feature won't work there's a bug in unity so I'm in 5.1 I think right now so I'm going to just uh, make sure this top level is selected and click save texture this process will click the generate all outputs button and do the export bitmaps for you choose export here, this is a temporary folder we create, um, and it'll, it'll, so select the export all outputs, choose the export bitmaps, it will then bring in the maps and create a new standard shader material with those maps. Sometimes it can take longer than other times, generally it doesn't take too long, and if your system's fast it will be faster than mine, my laptop isn't the fastest in the world. Now you notice we have a new folder here. Uh, it's called Base Material Stone Floor. 
So let's see. Let me actually bring the hierarchy down here so we can expand this a little bit. Um, and you know what? I'm going to bring game up here so we have more space in our scene. There we go. Um, so let's see. Base material stone floor 4. It's right here. I'm going to rename this uh, marble uh, or demo 2 set floor 1. All right. So now I know where that is. This is going to be these are these are our, our, our materials here. These are what came out of that export. We don't actually need all these. Um, we actually don't need the material at all because we're not going to be using the material. We could just drag it over and use it, but that's we want to do more to it. So we're going to delete now the material and a bunch of the maps. Uh, we'll keep the height for now. Uh, yeah, there we go. So you want to keep only five maps, really, uh, unless you're using an emissive material. You want to keep the ambient albedo opacity, that's a diffuse map, ambient occlusion, the height map, which I don't always use, but if you want to, you can use it. A metallic roughness, this has the metal map, it's black because it's not metal, but then in the alpha channel is the roughness value, uh, so it's very important. And our normal map. Now, the normal map is usually going to be defaulted to normal map. You want to change this to texture uh, for the next step. So these base materials should always be basically only these five or four if you exclude the height map and the normal map should always be set as a texture not a normal map if you get a warning down here if you leave the material in you'll get a warning down here just say ignore um, but you can delete the material and you won't get that warning okay next step is the uh, is the floor itself we have in our uh, material generators folder a single plane um, this is basically uh, intended just to be, it's just one map. Hey look, I'm already using that texture. Or from, the last thing I did was the ceiling on the first demo set. Alright, so bring those over. This is somewhat similar to the last uh, substance that we just used. Only this one was created in order to have a lot more customization uh, in dirt and such. Um, the intent of this without, if you don't use a custom material it's just going to be pure white and you'll see all the dirt and stuff we've added there and uh, if you zero everything out uh, then it'll look uh, let's just bring all the dirt down to zero surface dirt zero. there we go so it's just going to look pure white uh, the whole point of this is that you're going to use custom materials so go back to your uh, materials that we just created and we'll bring in the albedo opacity here, ambient occlusion down here, uh, metallic roughness, the normal map, and we'll use the height for now too. So just populate this custom materials tab with those with those maps that you just exported. And then if it's not already selected, come up here and click the custom material button. That uh, makes the graph use the materials you've put in your pre in, in those preset spots. So this is what we have now. Uh, it's basically the exact look we had before, except now we can adjust it more. If you want, you can, of course, adjust the hue and saturation even more now. Uh, oftentimes when you, uh, when you start working on one of these, it takes a, a brief moment to, uh, to start being seen, but once it caches much of the data, you can slide it pretty quickly. So I do want a little bit more of a light look in this, so I might bring this up a little bit more and increase the contrast. All right, we're going to fill these gaps with dirt. So uh, ground dirt uh, is, you can ignore ground dirt and ceiling dirt for the most part since it's a floor. If you use this to make a wall, which we'll do in a, in a minute, then you might want to use ground dirt and ceiling dirt. But for now we won't, but we will use surface dirt. Uh, so the amount of the surface dirt, we should be able to see it. Um, there we go. And actually, if we if we bring this up to a very bright color, like a bright orange, uh, actually we already have orange, so maybe a bright green, um, we should be able to see how it fills the material. It starts there with the cracks, and then slowly grows from there with a grunge pattern. Um, so we don't want too much dirt, but we do want those cracks to look like they haven't been, you know, vacuumed in a while. Let's bring that up just a little bit. There we go. So the cracks have dirt in it, and there's a little dirt spilling outside. 
This is my preset dirt color that I've used. So we'll keep that there. We'll make sure the dirt roughness is, is uh, not very rough, um, which means it will reflect less. You can see it right here in this highlight. If we bring it down, it will reflect the light. So this little tiny blotch of dirt will not reflect as much. Uh, that's a nice thing. So if you have metal uh, or emissive materials, you can mask those with, uh, with these toggles as well. Directional dirt is like the ground and ceiling dirt, only you can choose the direction. And damage, um, if this is set to 1, it will only affect metal. So we'll set this to 0. Let's see if we can uh, see what, what happens here. Where level and the notch level are the two controllers. Notch does more with the edges, uh, and wear does more with the grunge pattern. So let's look at the notch level that makes our edges damaged. Um, so we can bring that up, and if we want, we could actually the lightness is uh, pretty high. Bring the lightness down, so it just makes it a little brighter, and perhaps we'll make the roughness a little less, so it's uh, more reflective. So we can bring the wear level up a little bit as well. And let's view this light on. So, you know, it, it, they're small changes, but they're changes that uh, can really bring some good ambiance into your game. Uh, Alright, let's go back. And um, we could add things like water um, if we really wanted to for, for our scene. Uh, we can grow the water up or not. Uh, but we're not going to do any of that. We're not going to add a room because this is going to be a repeated texture. So now I'm happy with this. I think this is going to be a great floor for this room. So again, I'm going to go and make sure that I have my uh, material generator, make sure this top level is selected, not the circle, but the top level. And we're going to save texture. Again, a new folder was created right here. This is timestamped. It's going to be called the same name as this, but then timestamped, so SFB single plane. So let's find that, and I'm going to rename this to be demo to floor one. Uh, and then under here, I'm also going to name the material demo two floor one. Uh, later, I'll move this into the demo package, so you won't find it up here. You'll find it in the demo package. And again, we don't need all these maps. Uh, they do take up disk space on your computer, and they're oftentimes redundant. So we're going to get rid of the albedo, emissive, metallic, uh, and roughness. Oftentimes, I'll also get rid of the height, but we'll keep that for now. You'll see these already created here. Every once in a while, Unity will use the wrong metallic map. So if this is empty, just drag this over there and you'll be set. Um, so now we have the material and we can bring this on here. And it's a standard shader material created uh, from the base material generator and then single floor or single tile rather, uh, single plane or whatever I called it. And now we've got a floor here that uh, will work for me. See it in the light. There we go. So let's also adjust this um, special middle area. So right here, um, we have this uh, floor outline. Uh, you won't find the floor outline with uh, procedural material up there. You'll find it down here. Um, this is going to be un under floors and five by five border. So this is our border here. I'm going to drag that over. Now, when you drag things onto the uh, objects, you want to drag the circle. Unity's taking its time building. In this case, we have our 5x5 five five outline and a lot of colors here. And when we select our material, our procedural material, you'll notice that there's uh, a whole bunch of options. Uh, you'll find in, in the texture masking above the custom 14 different blocks. Those are one for each block. Each one has inputs for albedo, normal, rough, metal, rough, and ambient inclusion, etc. And you can populate those. So what we're going to do is choose a, uh, maybe a marble to go on this, uh, or a flat stone, uh, something like that. So I'm going to go back up to my base materials and just go through and try to find one that I think looks good. Uh, chances are it's not going to be a brick wall. It's going to have to be something that doesn't have it's pretty flat in its texture. I think I'm going to go with a marble for this. Um, we'll take this marble. And we're just going to drag that onto the object. Obviously, this is not the way it's going to look in the, in the end. Uh, but for now, it gives us a good approximation of what it might look like. Because we can adjust the colors here. Uh, this marble has the main uh, adjustments. 
but it also has its own custom adjustments for this specific material. So let's just go through and, and adjust this so it matches the look I'm going for in my game a little bit more. All right, so I kind of like the look of this. It's uh, much different than it was before. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and save this texture. Oh, one thing. You've got to make sure that the top level is selected, otherwise save texture won't work. All right, again, new folder there. So I'm going to find, uh, it's called Base Material Marble 2. Right here, so we're going to call this Demo 2. Uh, Marble 2 base material. I need a better name convention. I haven't been using it apparently. Um, so we're going to go back to our generators. Uh, oh, not our generators, rather. We have our special border. We'll drag that back on. Select the top level up here. Find our Marble 2 base. Oh, one thing I forgot to do. Uh, save myself some disk space. We're going to ignore the height for this. Uh, my marble doesn't really have any height data, so we're just going to ignore it and delete it. So we're going to keep the four maps we need. And we're also going to change the normal to a texture. Apply that. Uh, and we'll go to our marble and we're going to drag those into all of our nodes here. There are 14, so it's going to take a little minute, but you'll get the hang of uh, bringing them in. All right, now with those all uh, in, put in there, we're going to go back to the top and just click the box if they're not already clicked next to each one of these. Unity will rewrite the whole texture as we go along. There we go, and now we have much better looking uh, texture for our outline. See it with the light. There we go. So we're going to adjust this even more, of course. Um, each block has its own adjustments for hue, saturation, lightness, contrast, and all those. So let's see that block one's in the corner right there. So you could, if you wanted to, change the color of all these and just make them all various colors. But instead, what I want to do is just give a, a sense that maybe they're not all cut exactly from the same, uh, the same quarry. Or from the same quarry, but not exactly the same uh, section. So what I'm going to do is uh, just change the lightness and stuff, just a, a small amount for each of them. All right, we'll leave the 14 by itself. So now it's just a little bit more variation there. But you also notice that uh, oftentimes uh, with some of these, the texture ends up looking like it's layered. So another thing you could do is change the offset of the material. All right, so now uh, they're much more offset, and now they all look like they're different blocks rather than the same uh, texture uh, that we just put on there. So now let's add some other effects. Um, we have ground dirt, which will come into play here. Uh, let's just raise it up and see what happens. So I like the look of this, and uh, let's see it in the light. That's good. So I also want to add a little bit of surface dirt, uh, not too much. Let's bring it up a bunch, and we'll go take it down from there. There we go. Just a little bit, just keep it a little grungy. And let's see if we can add some damage as well. Uh, make sure metal mask is only a zero, because none of this is metal. I'm going to bring up the wear level. You can already see that right there on the edges. And we'll bring up the notch level and see what that does. Okay, it has effect in the middle. So we don't want this to be that so unsaturated. So let's bring that back up. Uh, if anything, we'll bring it down just a little bit. I think more what we should be paying attention to is the roughness value. So let's turn the light back on. Uh, let's see what happens when we adjust this value. There we go. So let's make it less rough. 
figure when marble is damaged, it gets less rough. So now around the edges, when the light is reflecting, it doesn't quite hit the edges the way it does the middle. Uh, it looks like it just hasn't been buffed for a while. If you bring that down, of course, you can really see the change here. Uh, and that's a, that's a sizable difference for something that's not visually perceptive without the lighting. With the lighting on the PBR, you can really see the way that affects uh, this damage affects the, the material. So it's harder to see without the light on. So that's one thing to always have a point light in there to in order to see the reflection. So we're going to keep that there. Ignore the water, moss, and snow. And once you're happy with that, save the texture. And once that process is done, we have a new folder here. So we can call this demo to uh, uh, border. Uh, call it floor border. And I'm also going to bring that down into my texture sets. I'm going to create a new one. Demo two. And then I'm going to call it create folder called floors. There we go. I'm just going to bring that one into this uh, folder down here. Keep it organized. These ones will definitely be in the project for you or in a download at infinitypbr.com if it takes up too much space. So again, we don't need all these maps. So we're going to get rid of the data that we don't need. Make sure the right metallic is there. It is. And then we'll just bring that over. So now we have a standard shader material, fully uh, fully made and ready to go for the game. All right, now that we've got our uh, floor and this um, border set, I want to change this inner uh, floor out here too. So this is a one from the demo one. It's a steel plate or some sort of metal plate, a little rusted with some water in it in this embossed design. Um, it's actually just a texture on a flat plane like the rest down here so I'm just gonna uh, I'll just delete that actually um, all right and what I want to add in here instead is these uh, broken floors so under the in, your, in the prefabs floors broken floor one we've got these four prefabs um, and I'm just gonna bring them in uh, like this um, and select this copy its transform and then select my new corners and paste that value there. All right, so now we've got the four corners. Um, each one can be used independent of the rest. Uh, there's one caveat with that, and that's in the, um, in the material for it. If you go down to the procedural materials floor, broken floor, you'll find it right here. Uh, and uh, aside from the custom floor and gravel options, which we'll turn off for now. Um, we have these, cor these corner A, B, C, and D options. If you don't use one of them or two or three of them, then you want to turn those off because the material changes in these um, seams where they connect. Uh, so the material will be different if you're not using um, all of the all of the, the seams. So we're going to turn that off, uh, or keep those on rather, because we're going to use all four. Um, and we're going to turn down the ground dirt to zero and the surface dirt to zero to keep it up here white and red. So I'm going to find a different texture than the um, this marble here. Uh, so I'm going to go back into the base materials. Um, and let's see, we have the cracks and disorder and weathering and color. So that's good. I'm going to change a few things about this first. See what this cracks does. I see. Okay, we'll increase that because it is going to be a broken floor. Uh, disorder of the cracks. All right, just the placement. We'll just leave it weather weathering. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Okay, so you're going to make it weathered too. I like that look. So we'll bring that pretty high. Uh, and then the color. Let's see what kind of color and options we can do. We have mostly an orangish color, uh, orangish uh, look going on with this. So let me actually see what it looks like. Now, of course, it looks terrible when we just use it on these textures as is. I want to be able to see what this looks like in the lighting. It looks kind of greenish. Okay. Um, let's play with the colors and find a color that looks good. I'm... All right. So I like this. So again, export this material. Save texture. Yeah, we're going to call this um, demo two broken 
marble. Actually, it doesn't have to be the broken marble. We just call it old red marble. We're going to use it for the broken floor, but this texture could be used for anything like that. Uh, so again, we're going to delete the material and the emissive. We delete, delete, delete the height. Actually, we'll keep that because there is the height information for the broken floor. Uh, I'll delete the opacity in these ones. Delete those and change the normal to a texture instead of a normal map. Select the broken floor. And way down here at the bottom, we're going to add in these textures for the old red marble. Uh, and the gravel, now this is a, a, a texture that I was using when I was testing things. I'm going to keep it. Now, obviously, the gravel is uh, gray right now instead of red, and I think it should be red. So, down our gravel, we're going to add an overlay color. First, we'll bring the lightness to uh, normal, which is 0.5. We're going to add an overlay color of red. We can actually select the red we want, maybe this dark red right here, uh, and then bring the overlay blend up, and that will blend the color into the texture. You can see that here. There we go, something like that would work. Um, you can shift the roughness of that. I, since it's gravel, I pre pretty much figure it should be pretty dull and non-reflective. So we're going to add some ground dirt. Let's make this a vibrant color so that we can see what we're doing with the ground dirt. See how it crawls up the sides, comes over the edges, and covers it completely. So let's just do a little bit on the sides, coming over just a little bit. Um, level thickness of it, keep that where it is, just the contrast. Alright, and then we'll put this back to our dirt color. There we go. And keep sure the roughness is up. Uh, and that's fine with that. We've got some spilling over, but we're also going to add some surface dirt. Keep the roughness up on that as well. There we go. So we'll keep it about right there. Fills in these edges a little bit and, uh, and add some grunge to the top. So that should be good for this. Let's check out in the light. Sure enough, I do like that look. And let's save this texture. All right, so now that we have that set, uh, I want to make it so when my camera looks down, I want to see something down there. I actually really like these walls. Um, I think for like a well type of thing, I like them, they look good. So I'm just going to copy this as it is. It already has a material on it uh, that we had exported. And I'm just going to bring this down. Let me turn off the lights so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to add in a uh, light as well. All right, cool, so I'm happy with this pit particle. All right, so now we're all done with this pit here. Uh, and for the rest of the, uh, the level, I'm gonna just basically do the same thing to everything. Um, I'm not gonna put that in the video. You've seen most of the, uh, the effects of what we can do here. Uh, so we're gonna do the same thing with all these wood parts, all these walls, all these pillars. Um, I'm not gonna make you walk it, watch it, but uh, Definitely check out demo video number two to see the result. Um, and well, let me know if you have any questions.